Hey art friends, welcome to the Curio Art Studio. Curio is located on the main street of Zillianople next to the Strand. We're an art gallery and studio space so you can come in and create your own masterpieces anytime. But today we're going to be showing you how to do a really cool project from the comforts of your own home. We're going to check out an awesome artist and illustrator named Mo Willems who's famous for many different kinds of books but the one we're focusing on today is about a crazy, very independent pigeon. So we're gonna take a look at how the pigeon is not allowed to drive the bus, and today we're gonna learn how to paint him. So get your art supplies and get ready to make an awesome project with us today on Curio Creates. Here's what we will be using today to make our art project. Remember, use what you have at home. It's okay if you don't have the same things that we do. Once you have all your supplies, let's get started. Now that you have your art supplies ready, we're gonna go ahead and get started. But remember, this truly is supposed to be for you to make this at home with what you have. Today we're gonna to be working on a watercolor painting, but if all you have at home is paper and crayons, then make it a drawing instead. It's all about whatever you have to make artwork with. So Ayla, Ray, and I are using a thicker paper that's meant for watercolor. It's actually a little bit bumpy because as we paint today, it's gonna soak up that extra water. And we're gonna begin by drawing our very crazy pigeon. He is very crazy. There's lots of different stories about him. Sometimes he's angry in them because he doesn't get to do something. Sometimes he asks for things like the one where he asked for a puppy, but then decided he really didn't want a puppy. He wants something else because he was mad. Yeah, sometimes he gets mad and he has the little like angry tornado above yeah. him to show that he's angry. But we're gonna make a very happy pigeon today. So go ahead and get your pencil and an eraser if you need it. These two are going to work in pencil. I'm going to work with a Sharpie so that you're able to see it. We're gonna start with his head and that kind of rolls into his eye and beak as well. His head is a circle and today we're going to be using these little cups to trace with so that we can make a really perfect circle without even trying. But of course, if you don't have something to trace with, you can draw it on your own. Instead of starting in the middle, I feel like a lot of times I start in the middle, we're gonna go up towards the top a little bit and then we're gonna go over a little bit as well because we want room for his body. So we're gonna go kind of towards one of our corners. Whenever we trace, we hold nice and tight so it doesn't move. And I'm going to trace all the way around, holding my marker up nice and tight, trying to keep that nice and straight so that we have a circle that's about this big. We wanna make it nice and big because he always has a really nice fun eye that's drawn really big too. Would you like me to help you hold that or are you okay? I'm okay, I'm okay. Okay, oh, great, great. This is his head. So we are drawing it as big as we can because now we're gonna draw inside. Yeah, whenever I did this with my art students in Curio Studio, I gave them the choice to trace and they actually flipped this cup over and they traced the inside part. So that was a little smaller, but I'm gonna draw it for our friends at home. So we want this eye to stay really nice and big. I'm going to draw inside my head, this big circle to look like an eye. And Mo Willems talks about it looking just like a donut. So you're gonna be making a donut for the most part. So go ahead and you're gonna draw your eye. Perfect. It's just like yours. <laughs> if you have a little artist, remember you can always help them by doing dot to dots for them so that it gives them some practice. You've been practicing the letter O in kindergarten, haven't you? Well, the next really important thing is deciding where to put our eye because our eyes really help to know where we're looking and what's going on. You know, if we draw a picture and we're looking and we're talking about somebody that's above or the beautiful sky above, our eyes are going to be looking up like this above us. Or if I dropped something, my eyes would be looking down. So even though my head might stay in the same spot, my eyes are looking around. My eyes, if I'm looking over at Ray, are looking this way. And over at Ayla, they're looking 
this way. So you can decide where you want to put your eye. If you want the pigeon to be surprised, you can put your eye right in the middle like this. And he'll be a little concerned that something's happening. So you could either put your circle in the middle, you can put it towards the top, the bottom or either side. I like the pigeon to always kind of check out where he's walking. So I'm going to make this shape that's kind of like I'm starting to make a circle, but I kind of stop because my outer art part of the eye is stopping it. And then with my marker, I'm going to color this in black, just like in the book. Can you help me do that? You want him to look up? Okay, here's your dot to dots. It's kind of like the letter U. Do you think you can attach those together, please? Yeah. Fantastic. Maybe okay. I'm just gonna call this in. You're, you can wait to do that. We're gonna keep drawing with our friends and then we'll do that in a little bit. Okay. We're going to give a beak. We know that the pigeon likes to talk a lot and he especially loves to say how he feels and what he would like to do. So we're going to make kind of a letter M that comes off of it. And even if you want to turn it so that you can make an uppercase M, you can do that too. But we're going to keep this sideways and I'm going to make an M that goes out, back in, out, and back in like this. If you want to do it a little differently, you can, but we want to do something that looks like a beak. We wouldn't want to toss lips on like we have, that wouldn't make any sense. Wonderful. You use an M a lot to write mom. Huh, you're really good at it. <laughs> he does look like he screamed. That's because you gave him that awesome, shocked looking eye. So that looks wonderful. Now we need to make the neck. And we know that birds, especially something like a, well, pigeon, he's kind of cartoony. So it's not exactly how he would look, but a bird like a goose or a swan or even some of the, okay. A goose or a swan is good. I'm not really <laughs> great with my aviary flamingo. knowledge, so we'll just stick with, oh yeah, flamingo, that would be good too. We're okay. gonna give two lines that come down a little farther than a realistic pigeon because this is our cartoon pigeon and Mo Willems does such a cool job drawing him that as soon as you even see him, even this far that we have, we already know that it's the pigeon from Don't Let the Pigeon Books. I don't think you need a dot to dot yet. You did a great job. I already did. Pigeon has a little color change on his neck. So we're gonna do two lines that go across. Do you happen to know what color Pigeon is? Blue. He's blue and this little area is white right here. So here's two different options. If you ever, and on YouTube, you can find some really cool videos that Mo Willems actually made during the pandemic where he walks through his studio and talks about how he started to make some of his books. And he has a little lesson on how he draws pigeon. And he has a very interesting shape that he created that kind of is a circle and then it ends like a triangle. So he makes it and he's like, I'm a circle, I'm a circle, I'm a circle. And then he changes his mind to a triangle. <laughs> so that's kind of the shape of the body of pigeon. But to make it even more simple for our friends today, we're gonna simplify it just a little bit. And I know this is gonna look super weird at first, but bear with me, it'll look like pigeon. We're gonna start with this line right here. Not the one that's closest to the beak, but this back line right here. Can you girls put your finger on it or your pencil? Perfect. We're gonna bring this line out like this. This is going to be our pigeon's back. It's a little silly, huh? And now we're gonna make the rest of the body and we wanna make sure that we go down below. So we're going to start here, right, right here we're gonna start. Ayla, you got the right spot, the other part of our neck. Okay, watch me first. We're gonna make a really large U shape, almost like if we didn't have pigeon's head, this would almost be like a big slice of watermelon. We're, We're gonna make a really big U that comes all the way down really far, and then it starts to come up and join pigeon. This is a good shape but it's not quite long enough. See how yours stopped right here? We wanna see if you can go all the way up here to yeah. make his body. Can I have a dot to dot? You can absolutely have a dot to dot. 
Looks All like right, check that out. Try a that. Pigeon was Wonderful. Day five hundred easy to paint. Yeah, I think it's a little, little. <laughs> we'd say medium level. Five. Okay, we're gonna add those little chickeny pigeon legs. So we're gonna draw two lines that go down. One, two. I guess his little feet. One, two. Great. And now we're gonna add little tiny toes. So we're gonna kind of make a little mountain or a little V shape so that his foot looks like it's a little fork almost. Like this? This can stay up or it can go down. It's up to you. See how both the mine are kind of making a point like a mountain? Yeah. You can do it like that or you can keep it the same way. It looks like his little toes raised. We're missing one thing. Chicken wing, chicken wing. <laughs> Pigeon wing, pigeon wing. So we have to draw our wing. You can do it many different ways. We can do it as simple as a sideways V like this, or if you wanted to do something a little fancier, you're more than welcome to do that. This triangle wing like, makes it look a little bit more like Mo Willems. But even as we look at the book, there's many, many different ways that Pigeon's drawn. He's not the same on every single page, especially when he has different emotions. Sometimes the way he is changes. Bring that Sometimes right back. Sometimes he looks like a guy. You're right. Bring that right back to my marker tip. Wonderful. Great job. Now, one thing I like to do that you don't have to is sometimes I like to draw some little feathers that sticks off of the pigeon and looks like they're kind of falling. Sometimes when the pigeon looks like this, Mo Willems will draw a few feathers around it to make it look like he's kind of frantic and feathers have fallen off. And here's how I like to draw the feathers. I like to draw a small oval shape like this, kind of like I'm making the letter O or a zero. And then I make a little line through it like this to look like a little, this would be the quill that kind of holds his feather in. And you don't have to do this. I'm gonna make just a few to add a little bit to the background. And one thing I'm going to show our friends at home to do is how to draw a correct speech bubble because it's something that a lot of people aren't quite sure how to do. Now, you don't have to do this. You could be done. But if you do want your pigeon to say something, this is how you would go about writing it. So the first thing with speech bubbles that people don't do correctly is the first thing people like to do is write and create the bubble but then you sometimes can't fit all of your wording in. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna write the words. And you don't have to do this, but we're going to just show you how, so if you'd like to do that, you can. I'm going to write, don't let the pigeon. And then I'm gonna do a dot, 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 because there's so many different kind of books. I wanted to represent each one. So I'm going to go really nice and slow. So as we're talking about doing the speech bubbles, Ayla is going to be working on one. Ray is still learning how to spell out words and sounding letters. So I went ahead and I wrote what she would like her pigeon to be saying on a separate piece of paper so that she can look off of it and do her best to copy the words on it. But I'm going to finish mine. I'm going to let my pigeon say, don't let the pigeon. So this is to make our speech bubble. We're writing our letters first. And I'm going to put dot, 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 because that means that there's more to come. It's not quite done yet. Good. The next thing we're going to do, once all of your wording is done, then you draw the speech bubble around what you wrote so that it makes sense and you don't try to squash words in to fit in your bubble. Now that all that's done, what I can do is I can take my pencil, I'm using my marker, and I can make kind of a square shape around it, or it could be a circle if you want to. I like to do kind of a box shape. And I'm going to bring my box kind of closer to Pigeon. And then Ray, what I like to do is I like to add kind of a little triangle shape that looks like he said that. So you can add kind of a little triangle that comes off the end. Perfect, that's fantastic. And then sometimes I erase this little middle part so it looks like this is now all open as a bubble. Fantastic job. I love how you wrote it real big. That's wonderful. 
The problem we have with watercolor paint is that if we start right now, we won't be able to see the pencil lines that we drew. So before we start painting, I'm going to have Ayla and Ray trace over their projects so that it looks just like mine is. And you could do that with a crayon and black oil pastel. You could do it with a Sharpie. I really enjoy using Sharpie, so that's what we're using today. Um, but go ahead and we're going to start to trace over this. It is great eye-hand coordination to try to, to make your hand follow along a line that's there already. So this is great practice for them. Now that we're done outlining our pigeon, we are choosing to use watercolor paints today. We really love them. They're easy to use. They're great for all ages. Um, but like we said, if you don't have watercolor paints at home, you can always use crayon, marker, regular paint, chalk. It's endless. You could always create this picture however you want to with the supplies you have. So watercolor paint is really important that you have water with it. It's a kind of a concentrated paint. So these little containers have all the paint, but we need to put the water in it to be able to activate it. So we can't, we can't just paint with it because it's not, it's not wet. So that's why it's called watercolor paint. It has to have lots of water to get it activated. So we have lots of water here today. We're gonna use our paintbrush and we're always trying to hold our paintbrush like a pencil up here in the silver part. And we are going to put some of our water. I'm just gonna pick up my paintbrush and put little puddles of water inside. I'm gonna pick this really light blue for our pigeon today. And if your blue looks like this, like Raylan's, if you're running out, that's okay. Once we get even more water in there, there's still enough paint in there to paint your pigeon, so don't worry. Once you have your water added in, I like to take my brush and almost have it be a little roll. I like to give it a little twist and kind of roll it on top of my puddle. The puddle is actually what becomes your watery paint. So we don't want to stick our paintbrush in so hard that we get this chunky stuff. We want to use the puddle on top. So we're going to take our brush and we're going to start up at the top with our head. And it has that really nice light blue color that goes right along with the color of pigeon. That's getting really light blue. The more water you have, the lighter your color will be. So if you want pigeon to be a really light blue, just keep that nice and liquidy. And we're gonna continue down to the pigeon's neck, but we're gonna stop because this little area that we drew right here, this is actually going to be white. So we're gonna skip over that and we're gonna keep that nice and white, just like our paper. At any time, you can always turn your paper so that you're able to work right in front of yourself instead of trying to Take your big drippy paintbrush way across your paper. And if at any point in time your paintbrush looks really dry, you need to give it a drink in your water. Remember, watercolor paint means that we use extra water. It's right there in the word. Lots and lots of water. Did I mention we're using watercolor paints today? We need it really watery. Only a thousand times. We're gonna smooth out any areas that look really, really thick or watery. Or dark. And dark. <laughs> if it's too dark, you can always add more water to it. And I'm also going to do these little feathers that I drew in the background, because they need to take a blue color on too so that they look like they belong to Pigeon. Don't forget to do your head. I know I'm gonna do that for the back part. And we're gonna do a really fun and simple background. We are going to pick different colors. I would say maybe at the most three colors. My favorite color is this light blue. A very close second is a magenta color like this. And we are going to kind of make this fun background where we just take our paintbrush and kind of push down with our brush. And we're gonna make it kind of looking like this little bit of confetti, kind of just a fun polka dotted background. And you could do colors that are the warm colors, red, orange, and yellow. You could do cool colors, blue, green, and purple. You could do primary colors, 
blue, red, and yellow. You can even do secondary colors, purple, orange, and green. I didn't know secondary colors exist. They do exist. They're a real thing and they're important and special. Even though they come second, they're just as important. So last step is to make our beak that nice bright yellow. I like that I had him in the middle and did the polka dots kind of all the way around it, but Ayla wanted to do more of a line for the ground to show that he was standing. So that's a great difference between the two. They both look really nice. The best thing about the art that we make is how different each one is. That is really important, and that goes back to the beginning when Ray was worried that ours didn't all look the same. And that's the most beautiful thing about art, is that everybody can have the same idea of what they're drawing, and they can look so different. While Ray finishes up her painting, let's check out a little bit more information about Mo Willems and actually listen to the story of Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. Mo Willems is an American writer, animator, voice actor, and New York Times best-selling author and illustrator of children's books. Mo began his career as a writer and animator on Sesame Street. His animated works also include the television series Sheep in the Big City for Cartoon Network and The Offbeats for Nickelodeon. Children today may know Mo best for creating the popular children's book series Elephant and Piggy, Nuffle Bunny, and Don't Let the Pigeon. Willems has been awarded many honors for his books and even earned Emmy Awards for his time with Sesame Street. In 2019, the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. named Mo the first ever Education Artist in Residence. During the pandemic in 2020, the Kennedy Center created a special Lunch Doodles segment where Mo showed families and friends his studio space and how he created his books, along with follow along drawing videos on how to also draw his famous book characters, which is one of the videos that influenced our Curio Creates video today. Another great way to experience the creativity and art of Mo Willems is to head to the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh. That's right, the pigeon came to Pittsburgh. This temporary exhibit will run through May 8th and allows you and your family to make art, play creatively, have a fashion show, launch hot dogs, and truly bring the stories of Mo Willem's books to life. For more information about the event and museum hours, visit pittsburghkids.org. Now that we know a little bit more about Mo, let's read Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. Words and Pictures by Mo Willems. Hi, I'm the bus driver. Listen, I've got to leave for a little while, so can you watch things for me until I get back? Thanks. Oh, and remember, don't let the pigeon drive the bus. I thought he'd never leave. Hey, can I drive the bus? Please. I'll be careful. I tell you what, I'll just steer. My cousin Herb drives a bus almost every day. True story. Hmm. Vroom, vroom, vroomy, vroom, vroom. Pigeon at the wheel. No? I never get to do anything. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's play drive the bus. I'll go first. Come on, just once around the block. I'll be your best friend. How about I give you five bucks? No fair. I bet your mom would let me. What's the big deal? It's just a bus. I have dreams, you know. Fine. Let me drive the bus. <laughs> Hmm. 
I'm back. You didn't let the pigeon drive the bus, did you? Great. Thanks a lot. Uh-oh. Bye. Hey. While Pigeon keeps dreaming about driving, let's check back on our project and see how we're doing. So just to recap all that we learned today, we learned about Mo Willems, and we also heard, probably not for the first time, the book, Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. We talked a lot about how to actually make the Mo Willems pigeon. We started with some simple shapes like circles and triangles. We started with some different letters like M's and V's, some different lines, and we even used some different O's and lines to put them all together to make it build our awesome pigeon. And the last thing we learned about with drawing was how to make a speech bubble. So for those of you that are really into cartooning or graphic novels, you can start with your letters first and then make your shape around it so that you always have room for all of your words. Last, we chose to use watercolor paint to paint these in today, and I couldn't love more how we all use the same idea and the same supplies, and yet they all look so different. Thank you so much for making this awesome pigeon painting with us today. We hope you really enjoyed your time, and please remember that we have more content on our YouTube channel, and we would love to see what you made. So make sure, with your parents' or family members' approval, that you upload it to social media and hashtag CurioCreates so we can check out the awesome artwork that you made at home today. Thank you so much again for your time, and we look forward to making another masterpiece with you again soon on Curio Creates. Let's tell everybody goodbye. See ya. Bye, Bye Curio Check out these artists in action making the same project you are at the Curio Art Studio on Main Street of Zillianople. Feel free whenever you're done to ask a grown-up if it's okay that they take a picture of you and upload it to social media. Tag us at Curio Cool on Facebook or Instagram so we can see the sweet project that you worked on today. If you would like to have more content or always be in the know of something cool that's happening at Curio, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and our website at curiocool.com. This will keep you updated with any new classes, events, videos, kits, art supplies, art shows, and more.